One day, I randomly decided to make a blog for my emo slash scene OCZ the zombie girl. It ended up getting wrapped up in the emo scene community on Tumblr. Everyone's really nice, and it's been a lot of fun looking back at mid-2000s internet culture, and making art in this style has been really great for getting back in touch with the kind of art that really inspired me when I started out as an artist. Art that operates on the rule of cool and is heavily inspired not just alt fashion, but from spooky media at the time like The Nightmare Before Christmas, Invaders of, probably creepypasta. Anyway, as a comic and OC artist, the gear started turning for another story idea. How Z the zombie has to team up with the daughter of the Grim Reaper to fight off the seven deadly sins, trying to drag her down to the underworld. I figured since I was going to sit down and draw these characters anyway, that I'd try to walk you through my process. Hopefully this makes sense or ends up being helpful to anyone attempting something similar. Let's design them. Lust I actually started before I decided to make a video about making these characters. So here's the art I started with. While I considered making them all demons, I thought trying to pick popular emo character tropes and ideas I could associate with the sin would be more fun rather than just, you know, putting them in scene fashion and giving them demon horns seven times. So for Lust, instead of something like a succubus, I think vampires are pretty lustful. I was thinking about Marceline from Adventure Time and like, Thorn? from Scooby-Doo. I gave her a corset on top of this black dress with a leg slit and a blue gradient and like these armbands and a thing on her neck. I, I guess it's a necklace and a big hat with a bat wing on it. Did you know that the color of lust is light blue? You'd think it'd be red or something, but no. When I came back to her, I wasn't intending on changing anything about her general silhouette. I feel like the long dress is vampire -y and the big hat's a lot of fun casting a lot of shade, keeping her in shadow, you know, no sunlight. But I wanted to make her clothes more defined, like her having a more obvious laced corset as a shirt, rather than the tiny one around her waist. Took off her socks to fully expose her thigh and her arm bands and neck thing. More skin's better for the sexy lust character anyway. I made the bat wing on her hat a set of fangs, not because I don't like the bat wing, it's just I, I actually joined that from another vampire character of mine, oops. In the end, I was worried about the blue. Lust color is light blue, but apparently sloth is also blue. I wanted these characters to go together and look nice as a group, and I was worried they'd be too close, like they wouldn't stand out from one another. A lot of this process I was on my live streams with my friends, and they expressed they thought it'd be better if I made her pink instead. I'm sorry Deadly Sins fans, it's probably annoying whenever you see folks make Lust pink, but she needed to change, she, she was too similar. Azure Asmodeus is a hopeless romantic with an annoying tendency to whine, incredibly obsessive and volatile. She has little typical vampire powers, but she's particularly fond of using hypnotism and turning people into vampires just like her. I knew we had to rep the silly characters and straight jackets. It's a pretty big, edgy OC staple, and gluttony was the perfect sin to put in it. She can't hold herself back, so she's physically restrained. I wanted her hair up and tied back, so she gets these long braids, and I wanted to give her like four, but I thought they'd kind of get lost and really look messy, so I kept them just two. I do wish, though, I pushed her hair out of her face. I think having her hair completely pulled out of her face would get the the, the pulling, strained, restraint vibe that I'm going for, but I, I think I just felt like everyone needed shaggy emo hair. They honestly don't. The straight jacket's doing all the heavy lifting here. I also realized her straps look more like bandages, so I changed those to big black belts to, you know, communicate that better, and to give her something to break up her colors. Speaking of which, Gluttony is orange, so she gets orange hair. I thought it'd be weird to have a gluttony character be super thin. Plus, you don't see plus-size characters in this style very often, so I, I, I winged it. How I thought a, a heavier character would look in this style, I, I don't know if you can really tell. She also accidentally came out pretty short. This is Bebe Beozebub. She's a lot of fun to hang out with in short bursts, but she's always a bit much. She's an impulse buyer and a plushie collector. She's pretty generous, but super wasteful. Bebe can absorb any attack in her mouth and spit that energy back out even stronger. Removing belts and eating things adds to her power like a multiplier. I'm not really talking like food, I'm imagining her like mid-battle turning to the side and pulling up someone's mailbox and eating it. Envy was the perfect opportunity to design a cat girl, 
because you know like copycat i considered a kitsune and like a shrine maiden outfit but i thought this was straying too far from what an emo kid would design i think the middle school uniform on a character that's definitely not a middle schooler on the other hand was perfect oh and knee high converse because those are cute when i was coloring her i was considering a rainbowy vomit design i thought that would work for envy because like you know copying taking from others like princess neon boom that one mlpoc um but me personally i was never a mary sue kid i still use a lot of the characters that i had made uh when i was like 12 and i i was never the type of person to like slam everything all into one character design and it just it didn't feel authentic to the kind of thing I would have made at the time when, when this was the art that I was super into. Not to mention that I wasn't planning on doing this to any other character, so it would have made her stick out like a sore thumb. But I, but I was kind of worried about her being green, because I don't know why, but my brain went directly to Nepeta from Homestuck. She was also a green cat girl, and I was kind of worried and crashing into her with my design. But, but I, I, I think because I was worried about it, I, I veered in such a different direction that I, I don't think I came anywhere close to her in the end. Her name's Levi Leviathan. She's your loud, clingy friend who compliments you all the time and shows you her traced anime drawings, expecting compliments. She's pretty manipulative and seeks out people she feels are better than her. She has the power to shapeshift. While she can shapeshift into animals whenever and however much she wants, she can also shift into people. She can't copy voices, but she can sort of copy powers of the people that she transforms into. But like, like a physical power. Like for example, she can copy Lust's fangs, but any sort of magical power she can't copy. Like I mentioned with Lust, I didn't really want to make demons as much as I wanted to use emo tropes to convey the sins. But because Pride is Lucifer, I wanted to lean in on him being the devil. He has horns and a tail. He's a grown man with facial hair. I used Joan and Vasquez's art uh, for reference for him, since this art style is crazy restrictive, and I'm still figuring out how to work with it. I wanted him to be like really showy, like some kind of performer. But rather than going for some kind of rocker, something screamed to me that he should be a mariachi. I don't know. I just thought that would be way more interesting to convey that idea. Just Lucifer, though he also goes by Louie, is of course an arrogant showboaty asshole who's also incredibly stubborn about his decisions, commitments, and his own abilities. He charges up his powers by the admiration of his audience when he plays music, and actually fights by casting spells. And not like he breaks out a wand, he'll more like INSTANT BRAZILIAN WAX! Hmm? <laughs> like I said, I ended up working on a lot of these during stream. And I bring it up again, because my friend Sophie influenced this character a lot. For me, I knew I wanted him to be a mummy boy because of the powers I was planning on for him. I'll mention them later. When we were streaming together, I asked Sophie about any ideas or requests she had for any of the characters. She wanted him to be sleepy and to wear comfy clothes. So instead of putting him in PJs, he gets this cozy monster hoodie and slip-on vans. We agreed he shouldn't have a shirt on because he's too lazy to put one on when he's covered in bandages anyway. He's actually the only character with a different color on him than his designated sin color, blue in his case, uh, because of his red gingery hair. I think it's a good thing though. I think it adds a little more variety to the squad. Not everyone's so monochrome. Bronwyn Belfagor, he often goes by B, is a lazy narcoleptic. Not literally. He's a go-with-the-flow kind of guy who puts a surprising amount of effort into not having to put effort into things. He won't listen to you no matter how many times you tell him that doing what he's told is less effort than dealing with the consequences of his actions. Unfortunately, he says, I'm too comfy. He has the power to make everything he touches rot and decay. His power is the power of entropy. When I think about greed, I think about hoarding and power. Like the Onceler. So I briefly considered a Tumblr sexy man, a uh, guy in a suit, but I couldn't, to be honest. Uh, plus it got in the way of what I was already imagining for pride, so, so greed was 100% the sin I had the hardest time coming up with an idea for, but then I thought of something. Uh, everyone's been named after their associated demon prince, right? Even though they're not really supposed to be them. But, 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 Mammon, the sin of greed is like associated with wolves. And you know what's super scene emo? Scene mo? Scene slash emo? Wolves. So he's a wolf. This was kind of fun for me because despite having a few animal OCs, 
uh, designing just like a, a traditional furry was new. There was a few things I wasn't sure about, like how much clothing he should be wearing or what kind of fur pattern he should have. I, I looked up a lot of reference for this one. I decided to keep him pretty naked, uh, just with some accessories. Greed's color is gold, it's actually yellow. So he's wearing gold and there. I'd say he's the most like straight up wearing emo fashion, which is kind of fun for Greed. I think about like the young alt kids that feel like posers because they can't afford to look the part. All the seven deadly sins come from a place of selfishness or insecurity but none more than Maddox Mammon. While he has an air of attractive charisma, he's incredibly shallow and self-centered. He's best friends with Gluttony because they indulge their bad habits together, but their relationship is pretty toxic. He has the power of Midas' touch and uses it basically every day, but hates to use it offensively when he can't recover the things he's turned to gold. Wrath is the last sin I worked on, and the one that got stuck having to change things for the sake of the group picture. Character design's all about visual storytelling, using the medium of a little guy to communicate a story. And when you make a group of characters, they all work together to tell that story. Are they a team? Friends or family? Is one of the members an outsider? This is why you should make sure if the characters are meant to be in a group, they look good as a group. I was imagining this Sin Squad like friends with a common goal. A diverse group with varied powers and personalities. Just like the Sins, they're together because they're the seven worst, all unique in their awfulness. So as I was drawing, I was keeping the other Sins and the future group picture in mind, but I had let traits I was imagining for Wrath kind of get snatched up as I was working. It's a little first come first served, so I finally lined them all up together. So Wrath can just be whatever the group is missing. What was needed was a taller character with a bottom heavy silhouette, darker skin, no skirt or long hair to look different from the rest of the female sin. So talking about Wrath herself, her inspiration was Mandy from The Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Look at her. <laughs> She's already the embodiment of hatred and wrath. But Grim, you're already a cold, lifeless dummy. She wound up with this shaggy or spiky hairstyle, ripped jeans, big heavy boots, and a tiny top to show off her cool battle scars. And of course, lots of red for anger. It's also worth mentioning that I meant for her and Envy to have more similar hairstyles. I wanted Envy to be copying her, but since I made Envy first and my plans for Wrath changed, all they have in common at this point is bangs over one of their eyes. Maybe we can make that a character thing, maybe their hair used to match and Wrath cut her hair specifically so she and Envy wouldn't be matching, even if it was her hairstyle first. September Satan is full of venom. Mean words, nastier thoughts. Her violence is always ruthlessly planned. It's not blind rage. It's deep, cold hatred for everyone and everything. There's a reason people think Satan is the devil. September's power is to spit venom and to harden it into blades. She could do this as many times as she wants, or into any shape or sized blade. And that's everyone. I think they came out really cute, especially as a group because they make a full rainbow. Pretty fun and varied. The only thing I really want to change in the end is Gluttony's bangs so that they're pushed back. Maybe a little more body diversity if I could figure out how to do that in this art style. Creed being a different species is really fun. Glad he could stand out and still looks like he belongs in the group. I was a little worried as I leaned away from putting them in rainbows and band tees that maybe the emo wouldn't really come across, but I, I think but I, I think it works. We can rest assured they'll look cool as they drag the protagonist down to hell. And hopefully they'll have the chance to show off how cool they are on their own. I have lots of stories whose cast needs some TLC. Maybe I could just keep working on this story and expand this silly emo world. I'll have to figure that out as I post more to this channel. And yeah, thank you for watching. This concludes our broadcast day.